Comrades of Labour, good night. Madam MC, with your permission, I would want to adopt the protocol established by you, Mr. Prime Minister. Thank you. I am going to be brief because I am so happy and proud that I didn't make any notes. I'm just going to talk and talk from my heart tonight. Uh, however, comrades, before I do that, I will ask the permission of the Madam MC to ask you to stand. Because this afternoon, we laid to rest one hour stalwarts from Trafalgar, Mr. Ebenezer Jeffers. And he was one of the persons who went around with us. And I ask that we stand for one minute silence. OK. Thank you very much. And to his dear wife and family, we send our condolences to them and may his soul rest in peace. Comrades, I am happy. I am proud. And when I said what I will said, I think you will understand why I'm so happy tonight to see so many of my own people from West Bass there. It makes me, brings a great joy to me. Thank you all for coming out in your numbers and thank you for supporting Congress on this day. Now comrades, a little over 20 years ago, I was commissioned by the National Executive of the Labour Party to present to the people of West Bastille, a new candidate to replace the late great comrade Joseph Nathaniel Franz. It was not an easy task for several reasons. Some of the comrades are here, they could bear me out on that. The first thing, he was not from the constituency and there was total resentment for that, total. The first night we had a meeting at the Unity Friendly Society Hall. And a number of our comrades, not as much as was here, but it was almost full with people. And when I presented him, it was all kind of chaos, booze and what we don't want him, we don't so on so on. However, I recall in the hall, it was facing this way, I was, at, I was the chairman at the time, and on the left-hand side, there was Mr. Cyril Jeffords, Delaney, my good friend. And after finish speaking to the comrades, he got up and he said, comrades, let us give the young man a chance, you know? Because he's young and Captain Morris said what he said and so on, so let's try it out. But it was no still. I proceeded after that meeting and took the person in question was Sam Kondo. And I took him, I must call his name to make the point. <laughs> yeah. And I took him to every house in the village, Buckley's, Camps West Farm, all around. At the same time, Conrad's parents lived at camps, and we went through the whole thing. And after a long, long time, people began to accept him, and we stood by him. And tonight, on that note, I am shamed, I am embarrassed, and it's right, and deeply hurt to see 
the effort that not only me, but people like Brenda and all the other folks who are here, you know? The effort we put out to get that young man accepted by the people. Now, he has not, up to now, said thanks to me. And worst of all, thanks to you who have made him what he is today in every aspect of life. Everything, you know, has done that. And <laughs> I am saying he must be treated like a vagabond that he is. By all of you, there must be no sympathy because what he has done is a terrible thing. Now, so much for him. Now, tonight, as I started by saying, I am happy and I am proud to be here in a similar situation, but not, I will be the one who will be um, presenting Congress. But Congress to me is like a son. I've seen Congress grow and develop into wonderful gentleman that he is today. And from what I've seen here tonight, I have no doubts in my mind that all of you in this hall, plus those who are not here and may be hearing what's going on, will be happy and will have full confidence in Congress. Full confidence. Right. So, with those few words, dear comrades, I ask you for the continued support. Each one of us in this hall must go and tell not one, but two persons, and make sure you get them on the boat. Comrades, thank you very much, and all the best in Congress.